I choose to keep my children's wardrobe simple for two reasons. One, because it saves me a ton of money. Having simple wardrobes means that we don't buy as much clothing. And two, because the less that we have, the easier it is for me to keep up on things like laundry, maintaining their clothes, and just keeping things organized. So the less we have, the less we have to maintain. Today, we are going to be talking about how you can simplify your child's wardrobe. It's the perfect time of year to be talking about this because if you're like me, the weather's kind of starting to transition here and you're probably gonna start putting away your winter stuff, pulling out your spring and summer stuff. And so now is the perfect time to set yourself up for success in maintaining simple and minimal wardrobes for your children. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin, if you guys are new around here, and this is the Simply Organized Home, where we talk about all things homemaking, organization, decluttering, and simple living. Maintaining simple wardrobes for our kids can definitely be tricky. It definitely takes effort to keep our wardrobes for our children simple. Like one trip into Target and you can blow your entire plan because everything can be so cute and we can think that our children need all of the cute and pretty things. If you're like many people these days, you might just start shopping knowing that there are things that your children need, but you haven't really gone through and done the prep work to decide exactly what their needs are. So every year, about this time of year, I begin to go through my five steps that I do to kind of prepare my children for the changing of the seasons, the changing of the sizes, and just making that transition in their wardrobe and making sure that I don't overdo it because there have been years in the past that I have overdone it. And when that happens, their closets are just jam packed, their drawers are overflowing, and it's not easy for them to get dressed. It's not easy for us to maintain laundry. You would think that it would mean if you have more clothes, you have to do less laundry, but really it's the opposite because the more clothes you have, the less often you feel like you need to do laundry. And then that mound, that laundry monster can just pile up bigger and bigger and then it's overwhelming. So my suggestion is to keep things simple. So let's start going through my five suggestions on how you can maintain a simple wardrobe for your children. My first tip is to make a list. Ask yourself, how many t-shirts do my children need? How many shorts? How many dresses? How many swim trunks? And make a list to see what your actual needs are. Everybody's going to be different in this. Maybe your children have to attend um, like some kind of daycare and they need to be dressed in like a little bit of a nicer clothing on a regular basis. Or maybe your children attend a private school and go year round. And so they need more uniforms rather than play clothes. For us, my children are outside all summer long and they get dirty a lot. So our needs really are like 10 to 12 athletic shorts, 10 to 12 t-shirts. And then we have about two polos, two like kind of dressy polos that my children can wear for church or some kind of like nicer event that we have to go to. And then just one pair of khaki shorts and that's it. We usually try to maintain about two pairs of swimsuits for each of our kids and that's it. We keep it really simple. Obviously, if you have little girls, you might add in a few dresses in there, but really maintaining simple wardrobes makes life so much easier. Really decide what your family needs. Don't base these numbers off of what my family does. Base it off of what your family needs. Decide those needs and always err on the side of, I can always add to this if I need to. You're better off to go on the lower end of your numbers because you can always fill in the gaps if you need to as the summer goes on. So my next tip is to take inventory. See what you already have. So there are some years that my kids just like grow like weeds and we need to buy like an entire new wardrobe. But a lot of times my kids have not necessarily, they grow up rather than out. So sometimes we have a lot of things that will still fit. And rather than going and thinking that we need all of these new clothes and buying the next size up, I like to just go through and take inventory. It might mean that I have to have my kids try some things on that they've not worn throughout the, the fall and winter months, 
but that's okay. They're not always big fans of that, but that's okay because it gives me a baseline of what we already have. And so then I can take my list that I've created and check off. Like if I need, you know, 12 t-shirts and my kids already have eight that fit them well and look like they will fit them throughout the rest of the summer, then I only need to get like four, about three to four more t-shirts. So all of a sudden that 12 item list doesn't seem so overwhelming. My third tip is to shop what you already have. If you're like me, then you keep hand-me-downs. I think a lot of times when you talk to people who are a little bit more minimal, they maybe don't keep hand-me-downs. I'm not one of those people. I love hand-me-downs. I have kept hand-me-downs for my boys. They are four years apart, so there's three sizes between them, which means I only have to keep three bins because I'm very picky on what I keep and I have limited myself to one bin per size. So the three sizes between my boys, I have one bin for each of those sizes. And when the seasons are changing, I just go and pull out the next size bin for my little one. And I take inventory of what's in there because hand-me-downs can be a really big blessing if you have lots of children. Even if you only have two children, they're a huge blessing. I usually have about 75 to 80% of what my little one already needs, from his hand-me-downs. It is very rare for me to have to shop for more than a few things for him each season. So I really do think that if you have the space in your home, whether that's in an attic or a garage or a basement, to keep hand-me-downs, limit yourself. Don't keep every single thing. Keep the very best. And don't keep 30 t-shirts in one size. That's not necessary. That's not realistic. It's not something that you're actually going to use, but pick the ones that are your favorites. Pick the ones that are in really good condition and save those and limit yourself to one tub or one little, you know, maybe a shelf in your in your basement or your garage where you can store your hand-me-downs. And I promise you, they will be a huge blessing. So my fourth tip is to create your shopping list. This is the list that you're going to use as you go about over the next few weeks or month to fill in those gaps. So you're going to take your main list that you've had, subtract what you already own, what fits still from last year and what you have in your hand-me-down bin, and then make your list off of that. All of a sudden, those, you know, bigger numbers that you made at the beginning, they're not nearly as big as they once were. So your shopping list is going to be small. And I always like to err on the side of less because once you buy something, you own it. It's yours. The money is spent. The space is taken up. And you can always go back in in a few months if you realize, oh, we need a couple more t-shirts or we need another pair of shorts or we need another dress or two for church. You can always fill in those gaps. But once you spend that money, it is gone. And the space in your closet and the space in the drawers is taken up. So err on the side of caution, err on the side of less, and then Fill in the gaps if you need to, but I bet you probably won't. And then my last step is to shop. So I like to, once I've created my list, I like to look and see what stores are going to have sales. And then once I have my list, I can be picky about where I go and when I shop. It's not like I feel like I'm in a hurry. Um, especially because a lot of the times I've already found things that are going to work. If we have those seasonal, like warmer days, I already know that there's at least a few things that my kids can wear. I don't feel this massive rush to get out and shop for them. So I can be really picky about when I shop and where I shop and find good deals. So I like to watch Target will always have like a 10 off of 40 for kids clothes or they might have like a 20% off sale of a lot of their kids' clothes. I like Old Navy, I like Kohl's, I like TJ Maxx. I feel like I can find good deals there on decent brand clothing that will last through my two of my boys, which again, they play outside, they're hard on their clothes. But if I shop around, I shop sales, I feel like I can find pretty good deals on clothes that are gonna last. And shopping with a list is the key. I like to keep my list in my phone. So just on my notes app, I will keep a list of the things that my kids need. And then as I'm out shopping, as I go, as I'm running errands, if I have a chance to run in a store or I know that there's a sale going on, I can pull up my list and actually see what's needed rather than going in, seeing all of the cute things and feeling like I need to add everything to my cart because it's all going to look really cute and adorable on my child. <laughs> Instead of that, 
I go in with a list. I am very focused and very diligent to stick to that list because then I'm not wasting money and I'm not wasting space. So that is how I go about shopping for my children as the seasons change. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I hope that these tips kind of help you to make this seasonal transition and the clothing shopping and all of it, just keep it a little bit more simplified, a little bit easier, a little bit less overwhelming. And just don't spend as much money because really, I think I keep hearing these statistics about how kids cost like four, I mean, I can't remember, $400,000 or it, it continues to go up throughout their lifetime. And kids don't need to cost that much. They cost as much as we make them cost. And so if we're diligent, if we're frugal, if we are, you know, picky and we keep things a little bit simpler than maybe the rest of society, then I promise you, you'll save a lot of time, you'll save a lot of money, and you'll save a lot of headache in the long run. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in my next one. Have a great day, guys. Bye.